buy an RTX 5090 right now. Sony's coming out with a PS5 handheld and here's Battle Mage. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, November 26, 2024. We're gonna start off today telling you and reminding you that we do have a PC giveaway currently going over, going on over on our Twitch channel for this Thermaltake Tower 600. It's got a 9950X and RTX 4080 Super. Big thanks to Thermaltake for sending us the case and allowing us to build in it. Where uh, if you wanna come watch us over on Twitch, you can learn how to enter the giveaway over there. It's kind of our monthly PC giveaway that we got going on. But I'm looking forward to the PC giveaways next year in 2025 when I can have an RTX 5090. And in case I get too impatient and wanna just blow all of my money, well, I can do that right now with pre-ordering a system from Comino who would allow me to order a server with eight RTX 5090s. They've opened their pre-orders for these GPUs and that it's a good server that can survive harsh environments. It's not officially endorsed by NVIDIA whatsoever, but it's it's wild that this is happening even though the GPUs haven't been announced yet. So it's weird how they're taking pre-orders at all. Any pricing information like that, you have to buy it in a server format. So you're probably spending a butt ton of money in order to do it. But in case you have a lot of cash and a high risk tolerance, then maybe uh, check it out. But we do have more details coming out about the RTX 5090, specifically about its die size. It's supposed to be quite large coming in at 744 millimeters squared, which does make it bigger than the previous two generations of GPUs, but not bigger than Turing or Volta. So it's not the biggest that NVIDIA has ever released, but is it's going to be a big one. And we also got pictures of the PCI Express 5.0 fingers in case <laughs> you care about that or the font on the RTX 5090D box that's gonna launch in China. It might seem small, but actually this is one of the major leaks that we had when the RTX 40 series came out was that there was a different font that they used for it from the 30 series, which is how you kind of knew it was a legitimate leak because it matched up with NVIDIA's rebrand on their website and the box. I mean, this is the same as the current generation. So, but it, hey, it's font on a box for a very, very expensive graphics card. But you know what's not quite as expensive and uh, it requires the power of two graphics card? Today's video is sponsored. Hey, look at me, you're hungry. Oh yeah, you're really hungry. How about a fresh chef prepared meal delivered straight to your door? Sound too good to be true, right? Well, with today's sponsor, Factor, this can become a reality. Factor makes food easier than ever by taking the stress out of meal planning. No more time wasted in grocery lines, missed ingredients, or even dirty pots and pans. Chef prepared meals are literally delivered straight to you fresh every week. With a menu of over 35 meals to choose from and even options for dietary restrictions like keto, vegan, or vegetarian, Factor is the best way to eat. Even better, it's cheaper and better than takeout. Yeah, you heard that right. And you don't have to go shopping and you can save money on takeout with Factor. In just two minutes, you can have a restaurant quality meal ready to eat. There's not much traditional shopping or cooking you could get done in 20 minutes, let alone just the two it takes to have a ready to eat meal from Factor. Once you get started with Factor, if you need to increase or decrease your meals per week or even pause or reschedule your orders, you can do so at any time. It really is that easy. The convenience factor offers makes it super easy to get a solid meal in even on those super busy days because I only have to step away for two minutes to have a full meal ready for me. They even have snacks and smoothies to hold you over until your next factor meal is ready. Try factor for yourself right now. You can head to the link in my description to get 50% off and free shipping on your first factor box and 20% off your next month of orders with code UFD50. That's U-F-D-F-I-F-T-Y. Huge thanks to factor for sponsoring today's video. Well, my factor meals are gonna get done much quicker than Sony's gonna release a gaming handheld for me. But according to the latest reports, they are actively working on it. This is separate from the PlayStation Portal, which is the handheld that allows you to stream from your local PlayStation 5, or now it also allows for cloud gaming. This PlayStation 5 Portable is in the early stages, but will allow you to play games locally on the handheld and is supposed to compete with the likes of Nintendo Switch or the Switch 2 whenever that happens to get announced. This is not the first leak we've gotten about it. We actually have a video uh, that we made, I think it was June of last year, 2023, where we talked about 
uh, Sony's Project Q, which came out around the same time as the PlayStation Portal, but was slightly different. There was a rumor indicating that the Portal was step one, and then there was a dedicated console coming next for handheld, and that appears to be developing. We also found that out with the uDNA rumors that came out last week as well, that there is indeed a Sony handheld that should be in the works for you to play games locally. It's kind of what everybody wanted the PlayStation Portal to be. It's gonna be intriguing how they handle this in terms of uh, various different power requirements um, in order to match the performance of a base PS5 in a mobile form factor while also being price competitive. That's, that's the key thing there, right? Like the HX370 that came out from AMD recently, in terms of teraflops can technically keep up with the PlayStation 5, but the handhelds are starting at $1,100, $1,200. They're very, very expensive things. And so assuming some console optimization and some like sweet deals that Sony might get for it, I still think we're looking at the same price for a handheld as we are for just the regular console. Maybe that's worth it for a lot of people, maybe not. I don't know. I'm excited to see where all this goes. I'm, I'm here for the handheld gaming generation that we're in right now. But in case you're in the generation of people playing Ubisoft games on Windows 11, well, you're getting a paused update if you have any of these various Ubisoft games installed on your PC. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Origins Odyssey, Star Wars Outlaws, or Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And that's because there's just some weird quirk with it that just bricks the games, causes black screens, Windows 11 not jiving with what's going on with Ubisoft. So they're working to fix that. There's some hot fixes for Star Wars Outlaws where you don't have the black screen issue, but there are still some performance difficulties with it. In, in case that matters to you, if you're on the bleeding edge of Windows updates and uh, those games. And we're gonna stay on the bleeding edge talking about AMD's X3D CPUs because we have the 9800X3D right now. We actually released a video over the weekend right up there. You can check it out why you shouldn't upgrade to the 9800X3D, which you had to take a reasonable approach of investigating. Yes, if you review a CPU, you can show 50% performance gains, but if you use a computer like you would use a computer, then you're actually not getting all that much performance out of the 9800X3D in traditional scenarios. Anyways, the 9900 and 9950X3D are expected to be launching towards the end of January, according to the latest leaks, but the also the more important details coming out from this rumor is the idea that we're we're still getting the 3D V cache on one CCD, which is the main kind of culprit behind performance issues with the 7900 and 7950 X3Ds because you have to park some of the cores in order to get the gaming performance to work properly because the Windows doesn't know how to allocate things properly. So you have to tell the eight cores or the six cores without 3D V cache to sh shut up and sit down while you're playing your video games. And it appears like it's still going to be that way with the upcoming generation of X3D high-end CPUs. And we're gonna see if Reese is still this way. He had a bit of a water leak in his house yesterday. So let's see if he's swimming or not. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. You know what we're all about here, so let's jump straight into the deals today, starting off with this MSI Mag Core Liquid i360. With this ARGB 360 millimeter AIO CP liquid cooler going for only $99.99 with include promo code, making it $40 off. But then next up, we have this cooler Master 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz gaming monitor going for only $127.96 with included promo code SHOPCYBER20, which you will also be able to use on this next deal with the LG C4 42 inch 4K 144 hertz OLED smart TV, which is going for only $717.59 with the included promo code, making it an all time loan. One of the best TVs you can actually pick up for your monitor because it, it'll take up your entire desk in the best way. But hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, uh, Microsoft is getting a fantastic deal because apparently they've turned on AI opt-in for Microsoft Word and Excel, allowing you to give them your data on the things you're working on. Things you type into Microsoft Word, the numbers that you put in Excel has been automatically opted in for people who are using them for Microsoft to have the rights to train their AI 
on that. This was discovered over the last couple of days and Microsoft has not talked about it as of the time of filming, but there are ways to deactivate it and turn it off in case this matters to you. Obviously, this is just yet another step of Microsoft doing something for their consumer base that is just absolutely ridiculous, like with Microsoft Recall, where they didn't even have it encrypted, they didn't have it password protected, they were storing passwords and financial numbers in plain text. It was absurd, but you can turn this off. It's it's kind of gross that Microsoft is doing this where they're making it so that they're scraping data without getting your consent first, and instead just presuming consent and then uh, having you reject that after the fact, which not a huge fan of. But while Microsoft's raking in the dough from all this AI stuff, Intel is still struggling. We've been talking about how they are trying to make moves to save some money. They recently cut their coffee and snacks program that cost them $100 million a year, but they brought it back in order to boost morale, but it turns out they still need cash. So Intel is gonna be selling off their 150 acre Folsom, California campus. And then they're going to be leasing it from whoever the new buyer happens to be. This is a very common strategy when it comes to needing money very quickly. You just sell your land and then lease your offices back. It's a very short term focused solution, but it appears that's where Intel is at, where they need to make something like this happen. They have currently have 5,000 employees working there, but it appears that everybody is still going to be able to stay there, but this is part of Intel's effort to save $10 billion, uh, especially with all of the, the money that they're losing, putting into Intel's foundry services. But regardless of all the bad that's happening at Intel, there's a little bit more in that their GPUs got leaked. But now we know a lot more about Intel's upcoming Battle Mage launch, which is supposed to be happening in December, which is less than a week away. We're excited to see that. I don't think the launch is gonna be at the beginning of December. Actually, I don't even know, but uh, I'm saying December is less than a week away. But we have the B580 Arc Battle Mage GPU being spotted in multiple forms. Both of the forms are ASRock GPUs, but we get a lot of details coming out about it, including knowing that it's gonna have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, not seven or six X, but also that the Steel Legend GPU should have a clock speed of 2.8 gigahertz. The memory speed is gonna be 19 gigabits per second. And it says it's 650 watts, which is probably not the wattage of the GPU itself. It's probably like the overall system wattage especially because it has two eight pin power connectors. It's not going to the 16 pin power connector that we're seeing on other graphics cards, but this is the B580. This is the mid tier GPU. We currently have the ARC A580 out there, but then above that you have the ARC A750 and the ARC A770. So if this B580 is in the same vein of what we currently have, this is gonna be a middle of the road graphics card with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Potentially the B750 and B770 could have something like 16 or even 20 or 24 gigabytes, depending. Obviously, we don't know anything about the pricing, but this does give credence to the rumors that we've been seeing that Intel has an upcoming launch for Battle Mage in December. We're seeing product pages. It's getting listed at retailers. We have box art. We have a whole bunch of different things with Battle Mage. It looks like we're getting close to the release of the next-gen GPUs. I'm excited for it. We already got a preview of it in their Lunar Lake laptop chips, which we actually compared against AMD Strix Point, which you can check that video out right up there in case you wanna get a feel for how a lower power version of Battle Mage performs. And it's really good at lower wattages. So potentially getting something that's very efficient out of the B580 could be happening. But what also happened was you left comments on Friday's episode of Hot News, so let's go check them out. We got a couple of people talking about the GPU shortage. A lot of people are saying that it's an artificial shortage in order to justify price gouging its customers. I don't know if that's really what's gonna happen. I don't think there's price gouging that's gonna go into effect. I think it's just that the prices are gonna stay the same and not decrease because there is no supply. And then uh, it's just gonna be out of stock. I think the price gouging, it doesn't happen from NVIDIA, right? Like that's not normally how it goes. Usually, especially now, if you go to try to find an RTX 4090, you're not gonna find them at MSRP. Um, you're gonna find them at 25, 27, $2,800, but that's not NVIDIA getting that money, nor is it somebody like Amazon or Newegg. It's usually the third party sellers who are selling them at that high price and they're taking a higher cut, but it's not NVIDIA who's getting a higher cut. It's not the retailer who's getting a higher cut. 
Nobody benefits from that besides third party companies who held on to their stock who want to sell it to you now instead of you waiting for the next generation GPU to come into stock. So I, I get the uh, raise the price even more stuff, but it, it just doesn't work with how uh, the GPUs are in stock. You go to Newegg, 4090s don't exist unless you're looking at third party sellers, which is a very different situation. Nvidia is not making more money off of that. And especially with like the GPU shortage back in 2021, where cards were going for two, $3,000 sometimes, the 360 was going for $800 to $1,000. Nvidia wasn't seeing that money because that wasn't the actual retailers who were selling it for that much. It was the open third party market, which Nvidia doesn't get a cut of. So it, I don't, I, yeah, artificial shortage, sure, but it, it, it isn't anything that has to be produced and then has slowed down production artificial at that point. Yeah, they could keep it open, but why would they do that when they have something new coming out? I don't, like, I think we're upset, but like, for what? And then Dystig saying, just love watching an American tech show with a Springbok shirt on. Almost brings a tear to my eye. Not today, but you're, I, tears in my eyes too, I guess. And then Adrea is saying, are people like buying every single newest released game throughout the year and buy GPU every year? This whole hype sounds absurd to me, lol. That is an expensive hobby. I, it's not that everybody is buying every GPU every year, but every time there is a new GPU launch, somebody is buying it because the average upgrade cycle is five to seven years. So people who are on a GTX 1080 Ti, they're at that seven, eight year mark where they held out, they didn't upgrade their GPU and they're looking to do that for this next generation. But the same thing happened with the RTX 30 series. There were people on GTX 980s or 780 Ti's that are just now upgrading to an RTX 4070 Super, 4080, 4090. They waited a very long time, saved up their money over the last almost decade in order to be able to afford this. So yes, it is an expensive hobby, but uh, we are covering all of the latest tech and the latest gaming and all of that. And while not everybody engages with every new thing, somebody will engage with every new thing, especially because of uh, the normal upgrade pattern of five to seven years. That is the average upgrade cycle for gamers, which is something that Evil One backs up saying they were expensive and hot garbage in terms of performance. I'll stick with my GTX 1080 Ti. Yes. Exactly, seven to eight years. This is actually another video that we released over the weekend. Does the 1080 Ti hold up? We compared it to modern games and turns out that the 1080 Ti is still a very competent 1080p graphics card, which is hilarious to think here in 2024. I remember when the 1080 Ti came out to think that's just good for 1080p right now is a little, I feel older for saying that, but good graphics card. However, again, long in the tooth. If you, you're wanting to get higher performance, you want that, 50 series is at, it's that time. If you're eight years in, might be time to upgrade, theoretically. Or you could go AMD, who cares? And who cares if I come back for hot news? I don't know. We'll see if I'm back. We're, we're in the danger zone for uh, for my wife uh, having the baby. So I, again, just news will happen as it happens. And whenever my wife gives birth, I will take off uh, whatever I need to in order to be a good loving member of my family. But in case you want to love a computer, don't forget, come check us over on Twitch. We got this Thermal Take Tower 600 giveaway currently going on. We'd love to have you over there. And I'm done today. Bye.